Okay, so today we're going to be going through Lara Croft makeup. Now, this is the version from the 2013 sort of games and onwards. So if you're looking for that kind of like the more modern edgy games look, um, later on I will be doing a Angelina Jolie version for you. But at the moment, this is the one I'm going to do for you. So we're starting out here with some concealer, just going under my eyes and doing some spot concealing. Next up is foundation. This is actually a new foundation for me, so I'm not really quite sure how to apply it just yet. Um, so if you apply it different, go ahead and do that. I love using a beauty blender to blend my foundation in. I just can't get along with brushes anymore but or fingers, but if you use either, do that. Um, again, just applying your base makeup how you normally would. Now going back in with a different type of concealer. This is the third type of concealer that I use. Uh, doing spot concealing and highlighting my under eye area. Blend, 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 blend it and it all in. not forgetting to blend in the neck area as well. Next I go over and set my foundation with a powder. Um, I personally prefer to go in because this foundation was actually a little bit lighter than I expected. Um, I'm just going in with a slightly darker shade um, or you can also use a translucent one if you don't want to add any more colour to the top of your foundation. Once I'm happy that my foundation is all set, I am going in here with a powder contour just along under my cheekbones and along my jawline. Oop, and not forgetting your forehead. And then taking my larger powder brush and blending that all back in. Next up is blusher. I like to add this to the apples of my cheeks, um, keeping it really natural here and doing some sort of weird fish pout face. <laughs> I'm sorry. And yep, you guessed it, blending that in. I feel like I've said blend about 500 times now. On to the eyeshadow, so I love using a very natural colour here, I actually use two colours, um, but I'm taking the lighter tone and sweeping that all across my eyelid um, and right into the crease as well, really quite high up, um, almost to the brow bone there, uh, so yeah. Once I'm happy with the colour that I've got on my lid, I then go in with the darker shade and apply that more into the crease. Um, it helps, I find, just to add a bit of depth to your eye. I mean, that's personally for me. Once I'm happy with the amount of colour that I've got on, I then go over and just blend that all back in. Just 
going to add a bit of shimmer onto the brow bone. Next up is drawing on your eyebrows and um, I will always brush my brows up first. Um, this helps just to kind of keep them looking a bit more natural for me. My eyebrows are fairly wiry, they're quite coarse which is kind of annoying to work with. Um, and then I'm using a brow pomade just to go and outline the tails of my eyebrows. Lara, if you're keeping them fairly accurate, they're a bit straighter than how I've done mine here. Um, so you can always cover them over and make them a bit straighter depending on how accurate or kind of how similar you want to look towards Lara. Once I'm happy with the fill of my eyebrows, I go in with my brow gel um, and set them in place. I am brushing them upwards again, um, just because I like to feel as though that um, Lara has like fairly natural eyebrows. And for me, you know, if you're adventuring in the wild, you probably not have much time to do your eyebrows. I personally prefer to have my Lara looking a bit more glam. Um, I will always put a bit of eyeliner on just so that my eyes really pop, especially in photos. And then mascara time. Next up is lipstick. Giving it a scrub and a clean is optional. <laughs> I'm using a very, very nude lipstick. Nothing too heavy. Again, just for photos, just so that you're not looking washed out. So we're going to move on to how to do like the cuts that she has and then some of the bruising over the face. Um, I've kind of gone for like with this look, I, I always tend to prefer to look like I've you know, I'm the Lara where she's kind of been having a bit of a rough time. Um, you can also obviously just have like shiny looking Lara like this before she's kind of had like a rough time on the island. Um, but I prefer to have a bit more of a beaten up look because I've weathered all of my clothes as well um, and all the equipment to make it look like she's been having a very rough day. <laughs> okay, so I tend to use a mixture of uh, face paints. So I use the Meron, um, I use the brown and I also use the red. It's a very well loved palette of mine, um, used and abused. And then I will also use um, some eyeshadows as well. Um, this really helps to make it like build up the bruising and the dirt kind of look. And recently, um, shout out to Spider Tan uh, over on Instagram. He has given me the tip of applying eyeshadow with a bit of scrunched up toilet roll paper, um, just to again give you kind of like a dusty effect. So let's dive in. Here I've selected just a light brown to start off with um, and I am kind of going over the areas where I'm going to be putting the bruising. As you can see I've already done part of my forehead and I'm just doing a bruise which is near her eye um, and then just kind of going anywhere really that I feel um, that needs some bruising effects. I will use my fingers to stipple. Um, some colour on as well so it's kind of like a mixture of different blending techniques I'll use a brush I'll use my fingers and again either stippling the brush on blending the brush on um, just really making the face just mucky um, I'll then go back in with a face brush and kind of smooth over any lines so that if there's anything that looks like where you've got loads of finger marks like I'm doing right now um, I will then go and soften it so it's not as obvious that I've just kind of <laughs> put my hand on my face.
just building up the layers um, as I go really um, changing up the different kind of colors as well so I, I tend to use kind of like a mixture of three different browns which makes it a little bit more realistic so here I'm going in with the face paint um, this is a brown to begin with um, for the cut on her nose and then just on her lip as well again using my fingers here to blend stuff out I'll always start off with that brown and then I will and then I go back in with the red for the forehead I went straight in with the red to begin with and then I layered up um, the brown afterwards this is because in the picture it's a little bit more fresh if that makes sense um, so I kind of like mm, almost blend them as I'm putting them on my head I'm just going over with the reds um, right along the little cut you can always use um, wax or latex to kind of make it look even more effective um, but I've always found that this technique works quite well for me um, maybe it's something that I'll level up to in the future once I've applied that face paint I'll kind of conceal it with a bit of powder but obviously keeping it with a bit of a bruising effect to make it more realistic again now I am speckling on some face paint in the brown uh, with my brush I, I would I use quite a small brush for this um, but you can also use a bigger brush for like bigger splatter effects so kind of I would also mix those two up so I'd have some with big some with small um, because it's as though she's been running through muddy puddles and she's got splashes all over her face nice little close-up there for you don't forget to close your eyes please don't spray yourself in the eye I have many varied um, techniques and here we have my thumb stippling technique. It really is just kind of mixing up all the different ways that you can apply the texture to your face. Fingers, thumbs, tapping, brushes, stippling, paint brushes, loop paper, you name it, you use it. Um, you know, it, it's just loads of different ways of creating that kind of different texture. Whenever I put the face paint on my face, obviously, I will go back in and set it um, because I just feel, especially if you're doing a bruising effect, you don't want it to look too bright. Um, it depends how fresh you want to make it look. I'm sorry for that face that I just pulled. Um, this is a recent tip that I picked up, which is adding a bit of yellow around the edges of bruises. Um, I think this works a little bit more for if you're not doing as fresh a bruise. Um, I think it kind of worked here, I managed to blend it out, but I'm not sure I would be doing this again in the future. And then my weird dance. This is my oops face, I put too far too much on, but it's fine. If you do make a mistake, just remember this. the whole point of this look is not to look perfect and you can always pout about it and then cover it up later with powder. So here we go, going in with the toilet roll here. As you can see, I kind of gave myself like a five o'clock shadow. I mildly panicked part way through, but then I, again, blending. Blending is your friend if you make a mistake, it's fine. I think this is a really good technique and definitely one that I'll be keeping for future. So not forgetting the um, cut on my lip, I went back in just as I did before with a bit of red paint, stippling it in and leaving it a little bit fresher because this is as though I've literally just had a, I don't know, a right hook to the face or something. So um, I didn't want to make it too dark. Um, and then just adding a bit more kind of bruising dirt effect around the edge of it and <laughs> look how sad I am. I did have some filming problems whilst trying to film this so I'm sorry because the lighting looks different. Um, anyway, so 
just making sure that obviously any of like the dirt effect that you do if you're going to be wearing this for a con you want to make sure you're bringing it down your arms i hope you found some tips in this video useful give me a thumbs up comment down below if you've got any questions or if you just want to talk about the look or tomb raider uh, my inbox is always open thank you very very much for watching now it's time to go and raid some tombs <laughs>